Hey guys, what is going on today? So today I have something very exciting to show you. Um, and especially if you're a home uh, automation enthusiast as, uh, as I am, you're actually gonna like this a lot. So one of the biggest concerns that people are having nowadays is all these hacks that are happening with, uh, you know, passwords getting stolen and leaks and hacks. And there's been so much of this in the news. And, you know, as users uh, of the internet, we have to try protecting ourselves where possible. Uh, and for me especially, I wanna make sure that my home uh, is protected as well. And for that reason, I'm gonna show you how you can start introducing things like two-factor or multi-factor authentication within your home automation tool. So I actually have Home Assistant that I use and in Home Assistant, basically I'm gonna be starting to provision some of my things like my garage door opener with two-factor authentication. I've actually got a separate project going on, a commercial project where I'm using multi-factor authentication, including uh, face, thumb, and uh, two-factor authentication using some kind of uh, a text message or, or key that you gotta add in. So that'll be later on. But for now, I'm actually gonna show you how you can implement a simple two-factor authentication within your home automation framework. So what I have set up here is I have a relay and as you can see in this relay, I basically got this little uh, blue light that's uh, shining. And right now this is a energized relay. And what I want to do within my code is I actually want to be able to go ahead and enter a two factor authentication in order for me to activate this relay. So what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and it's going to turn the relay off for about a second and then turn it back on. Um, and that's essentially what I want it to do. And then this way I can use this, for example, for my garage door opener. If I have this outside, instead of putting a, a, a code that sort of sits there all the time, I can actually have a randomly generated code. I have my phone or Apple Watch with me. I can use it on both. And then I can go ahead and open it. So let me show you how this works. Now I'm gonna go ahead and enter a random code right now. So I'm gonna enter one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you're gonna see that it actually says not authenticated and the relay is actually still energized. So it's actually done nothing to it. So now I'm going to rerun this. I'm going to enter the code 429889. 429889. And now you will see the relay just turned off and turned on and it actually says authenticated. So the only way this is going to actually let somebody in is if you actually go ahead and put in the right code. So let's try this again, put in something random. Now let's bring up the actual code. It's 027721. 027721 and it's as authenticated and as you can see the relay went on and off and again a great way to add this to your home automation uh, framework what i've actually also done here is i said if it's validated we can go ahead and run this command called get command but i've also left this thing uncommented here that says client.publish and here you can go ahead and add in whatever sensor you want that you want to publish to turn it off or on. So this is very easy to go ahead and integrate into something like Home Assistant as well. So now let's go ahead and dissect the code a little bit more. Let me help you understand what you need and let's walk through the code in a little bit more detail. So I use Pi OTPs and QR codes GitHub page to basically generate this little helper function for you. Now Pi OTP, you can just go ahead and install that pip Pi OTP and Pi QR code. I'm also gonna have a requirements.txt file for you so that if you wanna put this in a virtual environment, you can just go ahead and run the requirements.txt and you'll have all the files you need. Here, what we're doing is we're going ahead and we're generating a random secret key, which is this here. And every time I run this, you see the secret key is gonna go ahead and change. That's because it's supposed to be secret. Now, if you want, you can make this a lot bigger. Like I could do 126 here, for example, and my secret key becomes massive. So you know, sky's the limit in terms of how you want to do this, but from my perspective, I just left it as the base. Then you're going to go ahead and generate a provisioning URI, and that is basically the URL that you can do one of two things. You can actually go ahead and put this URL into your iPhone or your Android phone, and it will go ahead and open up your authentication app and it'll add it in there. Or the easier way is you can just go ahead and scan the QR code. I use an application called Authy. You can use Google Authenticator. There's a whole bunch of different tools you can use. Authy is free, I've been using it for years. They also have a Chrome plugin. So that's why I love that tool. Here, I'm just doing some basic print statements, printing out your key. And again, once you have this, store this in a secret place. If you lose it, you are gonna have to redo this whole thing all over again. Then it'll just print your URI and then your QR code. So let me show you how you can go ahead and add this into something like Authy. So 
let me go ahead and bring my phone up. All right, so it's very simple. You can have a whole bunch of different accounts here. You're gonna go ahead and hit scan QR code. Then I'm literally gonna scan this QR code that is in front of me, which is what it's generated. It's gonna add it to the account. You can go ahead and change this to whatever you want. So I'll just change this to, I don't know, test app or something like that. Let's go to test app, save. I also have to make sure that I copy my key down. I didn't hard code it or I didn't actually code it uh, on purpose so that it's dynamic just so that if you generate it again, you gotta make sure that you put in a new key. So let's put in the new key. Now I'm just gonna enter one, two, three, four, five, six. And you see it says not authenticated and nothing happens to the actual relay. So now let's go ahead and bring up the actual authy code. So we are gonna say 252027. 252027 and authenticated and you saw that the relay went off and on so again guys this is a really really fun little project if you want to go ahead add this to home assistant what i may actually do is i'm going to try to modify my cover maybe create a custom component or something like that so that every time i hit my garage button instead of it going opening or closing i have the option of using two-factor authentication which i think is really cool just for the extra safety we have our watches with us, our phones with us. There's no reason why we shouldn't be protecting ourselves. There have been cases I've even read where they actually install little cameras above your garage door opener if you have a pin pad outside. And uh, some thieves can actually go ahead and watch you type in your pin and when you're not home, they can go in and steal those fancy tires that you got. And speaking of safety, I can't stress enough that when you're actually browsing online, you need to make sure that you protect yourself as well. You wanna make sure that your information isn't getting into the wrong hands. And for that reason, I recommend you use a strong VPN. And the VPN that I use and the one that I recommend is actually called NordVPN. There's a link down below in the description if you're interested in some of their promotions. But take a look, I've been using them for several years and I absolutely love their service, the different types of services they offer. So take a look down below and check it out. So it's always a good idea to protect yourself. Hopefully you guys learned something new here and if you did, please consider liking and subscribing and I will talk to you next time.